Hey, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips. This is episode number six, my weekly series where I slap a bunch of clips together and show you some of the fruity stuff that's happening out there. We always want to make sure that we stand in opposition to false teachers, false prophets, because they're really fruity. So with that, let's get going. Now, first up, we've got Dutch Sheets on your right there. And Dutch Sheets is a confirmed false prophet, and he is shameless. I'm sure by now all of you have heard of the revival that's taking place in Asbury, Kentucky. And it seems like a wonderful thing. Uh, certainly keep them in prayer. If God indeed is moving here, uh, it would be absolutely wonderful. But here we've got Dutch Sheets, came on this program, Flashpoint. And uh, he wants to take credit for having prophesied this. And again, this is how you can truly, uh, really get a better understanding of how wicked these false prophets are. They want the attention on them. And so here is uh, Dutch Sheets wanting to take credit for having prophesied this. It's absolutely shameless. There we go. Asbury University, we will continue to follow that. Let me go to you, Dutch. Uh, you know, it's interesting that just days before we did, on this program, that you re, I had you retell that, that uh, vision, that open vision you had. Was this the first thing when you heard about Asbury? Is this the first thing that came to your mind when you saw it? Absolutely it was. And I think it is the beginning. I mean, it, it, it won't be the only place, as we right. know, but... But just as the, the outbreak there in 1970 that took place that uh, eventually touched 100 and I think they say 130 different campuses in America, this is going to spread. And uh, I think, you know, I've had hundreds and hundreds of people contact me and say, this is what you were talking about. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine Dutch sheets right now, because, again, in the middle of this uh, revival in Asbury, He's putting himself at center stage. He wants the attention. Everybody look at me. Look what I prophesied. This is what I was talking about. Let's take a look at this. Now, on the same channel, I went back, gosh, a couple of weeks. You can see the title. I had a vision of a massive revival. Uh, looks like January 24th, 23. And sure enough, here's the video. Let's take a listen to what he's saying. What he showed me was what this revival would look like, this blowing of the breath again intensely. I saw the fire of God coming to America. It wasn't the fire of judgment. It was the fire of revival. But what he highlighted and showed me specifically was this fire coming to the youth of our nation, the young people, campuses, college campuses, high school campuses, the fires of revival began to burn. And he literally showed me uh, campuses where this was happening. And I said, I see it on such and such. And I named the university and I would talk about what I was seeing. And then I said, I see it on this campus. Uh, and I talked about what I was seeing. And then I. Re All right. So <clears throat> the story that he's telling, and it, because for the sake of time, I'm not going to play it all. At the very beginning, he says that on 9-11-2001, remember what happened there, when the airports got shut down after the terrorist attack, that he was stuck somewhere and uh, he wound up going to a church and preaching at a church and he went into an open vision right in front of everybody. And he saw, well, you've heard what he described, this was the vision that he saw, a revival coming to the youth coming to universities. Now, do we have video evidence of this? Of course not. This is a story. Why? Well, because Dutch wants to be the center of attention. Why? Well, because these false prophets, these false prophets are narcissistic, egotistical maniacs. They must be at the center of attention. So, what they do is they harness their talent. What is their talent? Storytelling. You're just going to have to take my word for it. Here's a fantastic story that cannot be verified. 
And you're just going to have to go ahead, take my word for it, and believe it. This happened. So God showed me first because, yes, I am someone great. And so I'm going to go on, you know, uh, YouTube channels and uh, social media and tell everybody, hey, I saw this all coming. Look how important I am. Now, this is true. Whether you believe, you, you might disagree with me. And I'm just kind of ranting off the cuff here. But this is Dutch Sheets. This is what he does. He is a certified, a verified, and a confirmed false prophet, having prophesied Trump's victory in the 2020 presidential election, and then reinstallment several times after that. You can go to his channel. The videos are still up. Always a dream. I had a dream I was walking through the halls of golden heaven and God gave me the seal. And as I broke the seal, this was the reinstatement of Donald Trump. He was going to be put back in. And just then, 58 eagles came down and picked me up and brought me to the Capitol steps. I mean, it's just fantastic stories. And it's all because he's a flaming narcissist who must be at the center of attention. This guy gets me more angry in, in, with righteous anger than a lot of the other false prophets because he is so blatant. Now, some of you might disagree. and You say, no, this was true. Well, show me the video evidence from 2001. It doesn't exist. You know where it, you know where it, it does exist? In this guy's giant head. But I tell you what these prophets, these alleged prophets do is prophesy revival ad nauseum revival 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 don't believe me watch this here's a video and it's kind of hard to hear but i wanted to go back in time so you can see how long this guy has been prophesying revival this was from january 9th of 2011 so literally 12 years ago uh, I'm going to play this, so listen to the audio. One of the things I saw in that vision came back to me when Damon started declaring it just now. I didn't have theology for what I saw. It was just, it was, it was this kind of stuff breaking out, and I have theology for this, but I'm going to This kind of stuff just breaking out, but it was breaking out everywhere. It was in high schools and universities, campuses. It was out of control. Nobody could stop it. Administrators couldn't stop it. Nobody could stop it. It was just out of control. Much of the time, it was like... So you heard it, high schools, universities, all kinds of revival breaking out. Now, again, this is from 12 years ago. This is how long this guy's been doing this. All right. <clears throat> One of the funny things about the Internet is stuff never goes away. Now, the video I'm about to show you, or at least these couple of clips, very grainy. This is from 2015, but it could be older than that. Dutch is a little heavier here, but I want you to listen to what he says here. And again, sorry for the, for the lack of quality. This is not my video. God is about to release it. You don't have to work and strive to get it. You just have to press into him. There is a window of grace available to us right now that is, going, that is I believe, the greatest window of opportunity we've seen in our lifetime. I declare to you that the next six months is a window of divine grace to be released on an apostolic church, not just apostles, an apostolic church that is extending kingdom dominion into the earth that's what i define it all right so you hear the dominion doctrine that's false but i'm going to skip ahead a little bit i'll do this in real time uh hold on a second here and I'll, i'm going to post this video in the description so you can go and listen to this all but here we go
great revival fire will now begin to burn through intercession soaked regions as my awakening begins to roll. I love that phrase, intercession soaked regions. The regions will now become activated by my glory. My shaking has come. I am shaking earth. I am shaking the heavens, walls, strongholds. You can go listen to this. It's just nonsense from a false prophet. And all the buzzwords are there. Revival, shaking, things are going to start to happen. You've heard them before within six months. I'm not trying to take him out of context. These things are spoken in virtually all of these so-called sermons, these messages. False prophecies, while the piano plays softly in the background, he works the crowds up into frenzies, and they're screaming and hooting and hollering and clapping. This is what they do. And so we need to be aware of this. Year after year after year after year, they prophesy revival. It's a staple in their false messages. I went through, and in just a couple of minutes, here's just a couple of videos from Dutch Sheets with either the thumbnails or the titles. Revival, revival. And some of these go back 10, 12, 15 years. Now, if I did an extensive search, I'm sure I could probably find more. If you were to go to Robin Bullock or Timothy Dixon, uh, Amanda Grace, or some of the other false prophets, it's the same thing. Everybody would love a revival. And, and again, what's happening in Asbury sounds wonderful. I hope it's genuine. I hope it's true. I hope many young people are coming and giving their lives to Christ in repentance with a true heart and beginning their journey of redemption, of following Jesus. It sounds wonderful. I really pray for that. But Dutch Sheets had nothing to do with it. Dutch Sheets is an opportunist. So when you've got a person who has thousands and thousands of videos on social media, and they've made thousands and thousands of prophecies, eventually it's going to look like you got one right. Literally prophesying, hey, the sun's coming up tomorrow. Yep, that was me. But in this case, you've got Dutch sheets crying out, put the camera on me. I spoke it. I'm someone special. Put the attention on me. You know, there's no humility. There's no humbleness. They're the ones who have to be the center of attention because they're narcissistic egomaniacs who must be center stage. And it's just atrocious. Acts 8 9 rings all too familiar, at least with the personality type. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Is Dutch Sheets uh, using witchcraft or sorcery? No, I'm not saying that. But just the last part of this verse, giving out that himself was some great one. Now, some of you might disagree, and that's fine. As for me, it makes me absolutely sick. All right, so next on Friday Fruit Clips, we've got this guy right here. Check, check out his suit. So just a little backstory. This uh, is Brian Tamaki. He is a, or he is an alleged prophet from New Zealand. The reason this looks so freaky is because this was actually filmed in 2003. And it was filmed. So it was actually on like a camcorder film. Uh, so the, uh, the quality is not that good. But he makes a uh, prophecy here. And so we're going to listen to it and then we'll show you the rest. Preached so well and taught us last night that it's important to know who we are. And we know who we are. We know what we've got to do. I predict in the next five years, by the time we hit our 10th anniversary, and I don't say this lightly, that we will be ruling the nation.
and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And then peace can come to this nation. But just let me tell you this quickly as you ever see. And I'll explain a little bit more tonight. But I feel very strongly in my heart that the word of the Lord came to me very strong and, and stronger over this weekend. That this will actually be the first nation historically in the world to be under the governance of God. I mean, true, true governance, true kingdom authority expressed through the people of God and through our political orders. So we're going to have a fantastic time tonight. But right now, it's our awesome privilege to introduce you to somebody. He made a declaration that in five years, you shall be ruling and reigning in this nation. That means you control the wealth. That means you will control the riches. That means you control the politics. That means you control the social order. That means that you are in. All right, so you heard it. Now, again, this was from 2003. And again, sorry for the audio and the video. This is a very old clip. But uh, Brian Tamaki, uh, again, a charismatic uh, televangelist uh, down in New Zealand, made this declaration he you heard it uh, he said that this came from the word of the lord uh very interesting uh as this man right here uh, went on to expound upon that word where he told the people you'll control the wealth and you'll control the politics and all the other things uh very telling uh things have not changed much this is dominion uh theology or it's not theology, it's, it's dominion doctrine, it's not scriptural. And by the way, when, when Mr. Mullet here with his zoot suit uh, stated that this would be the first nation under the governance of God, I think he forgot about Israel. But that's not surprising because uh, he probably believes in replacement theology, or I'm sorry, replacement doctrine as well. So uh, did that happen? Uh, the answer is no. It didn't happen, but I wanted to play this clip because it just goes to show you that uh, these people, these alleged prophets and alleged teachers, they don't follow God. They don't follow Jesus Christ. They want their paradise here on earth, and uh, they use the name of Jesus Christ to try to influence the people. I shouldn't say try because you, you saw the audience. It was quite successful. They believed him. And, uh, but it, it's just very sad because we see this happening today. Boy, oh boy, it's like, wow, uh, people just don't learn. But these are doctrines of devils. These are man-made doctrines that uh, are whispered to them from devils. Anything to take the glory off of Jesus Christ. And sadly, they're all too successful many times. Now, here's a question for you. Do you think the people rejected Brian Tamaki? Well, let's find out. Here's a clip from just five months ago. Five months ago, Brian Tamaki, or Tamaki, however you say it, he's still there. He's still in power. He has not been rejected by professing believers of Jesus Christ for his false prophecy. He's still going strong. These, uh, this is where he's marching down the streets. He's calling for a new political party uh, and a snap election. You've got bodyguards here. He's got, a, he's got a, a protective detail which surrounds him. The man is still very powerful. So what does this have to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Nothing. It's the same thing that's happening today in America. You've got all these false prophets in America who have been and are still calling for the return of Donald Trump. And it's just very sad. It's so sad to see the state of the church where they will not reject false prophets. And uh, so I just wanted to show you this today because there is nothing new under the sun. But hopefully some people, uh, 
again, those who profess to love Jesus Christ, will awaken and see the damage that these people are doing. This guy has a serious background uh, of questionable, at the very least questionable, uh, actions and decisions and behavior. And that's all I'm really going to say about him, but he does not serve Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity. He is for his own desires, his own political desires, and uh, he uses the name of Jesus Christ as a mere footnote to his folly. Very sad. All right, next up we've got Spirit Move Ministry, Miss Liberty, Liberty Turnipseed. I don't know what's up with that name. Uh, you can see the title, Prophetic Dream, Naked and Unashamed. What is going on? More, uh, more naked prophets, apparently. Let's listen to what she's got to say. I'm just saying. Um, but everybody in the dream was naked. No, I don't remember them. No, there's no physical picture. Come on, people. Um, but the thing is, I was naked. Everybody was naked. And there was a huge line of men and women of God in line. And we were going through, I'm not joking, and um, everybody was, was showering off under these big hoses, and we were being showered off, okay? But in the dream, now listen, this is, this is going to be big, especially for you to understand what, is, what God's trying to say here. It's very obvious. But if you're not getting it, you will in a second. So here's the thing. Usually dreams where you're being showered off, cleansed, uh, I don't even know, maybe you're getting hosed off, I don't know, but we were in a, we were at a farm, and so everybody was getting hosed off, but you know what was interesting is we, we were happy. All right, it's clear Ms. Turnipseed uh, has been watching Timothy Dixon and Robin Bullock. She wants to get in on the naked action. I don't know what to say here. Uh, so according to her, she had a prophetic dream where she and many other people were on a farm naked and they were getting hosed off. I'm a maniac, maniac on the floor, and I'm what more can I add to this? These people mock God. This is absolute mockery. No mention of Jesus Christ and him crucified. No scripture, no repentance. Just a great big happy farm of naked hippies, apparently, spraying hoses on each other for what reason? I, I don't know. I, I don't have the degraded mind enough to find out. And it really doesn't matter if she cites any verses. Uh, she's a huckster. And uh, she's a deceiver and a false prophet. But I just thought this was important enough to show because, I don't know, is this a trend? That the, uh, the prophets are all getting naked, I guess. I don't know. Let's move on. All right, so our last one today is a, uh, a guy called Apostle Wise Preach. Wise Preach. Now, I've, never, uh, I've never seen this guy before, but he came across uh, suggested on uh, my YouTube feed. And uh, so we're going to play some clips and examine this guy because he's a professing prophet. So get ready for this one, guys. Here we go. Those of you that are listening to this word right now, God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is Apostle Wise Preach coming to you this day with a. Pro now, what I found uh, particularly funny about this was that. While he was weeping, he wanted to let you know that he was weeping. So he he typed that in there, weeping. Just in case you didn't know, you might have thought he was laughing. Uh, and, and of course, he's got the visual. He's shaking things here. So I just found it so funny that he put weeping in there. There will be an expansion in our knowledge, in our understanding when we shift from time into eternity. And my prayer for those of you that are listening to this word right now, God. <laughs> Whew, my God. <laughs> oh, I 
DC. Now, the funny thing, and you might wonder why he was shaking this up here. Well, look at the title. Apostle Wise Preach. God is about to shake things up on earth. So I think he felt you needed that visual that uh, God was going to shake things up. And that's apparently what has been happening for the last, you know, 30 years. Uh, every false prophet out there that's, again, just like Dutch Sheets, uh, uses revival as a staple in their prophecies. Well, uh, another staple is God's shaking things up. And uh, I put a community post out about that this week, too. But let's look a little further. You know, I, I could be wrong. He, maybe he's a legit prophet, right? Let's check it out. As I went to check out uh, his library, his history, I went to his channel, I came across this video. Look at the title here. And I and I, I immediately gasped. President Trump will lose the 2020 elections prophecy. And, and this is the first one I've ever seen from a proclaimed prophet. I thought, wow, does this guy have it right? And then I did a little searching. Now watch what happens when I hover over this right here. Look at the date that pops up. He made this prophecy on November 25th, 2020. This is about three weeks after the 2020 elections when all that kerfuffle was happening with claims that the election was stolen. But nevertheless, he did prophesy it, right? Well, not so fast. I went a little further back and I found this video. Look at the title, Prophetic Word, Employment and Elections. Now, as I hover over the date, you can see this one was made by him on October 30th of 2020. This is a couple of days before the 2020. On Tuesday, we are going to see God do the impossible glory to God. And we are going to rejoice because we are getting ready to see a God move in the earth. Glory to God and President Donald Trump will be elected for another four years. Glory to God. Stunning, but it's not, is it? The raw stupidity on full display of these false prophets, not even having the fortitude to remove the contradicting, his own contradicting prophecies. They're both still up on his channel and nobody cares. It's just amazing. And lastly, look, look at the amount of subscribers he has, 93,000. I'm on his About tab, and I, I came over to read his description because it's pretty hysterical. Read it with me here. Apostle Wise Preach is an influential and visionary spiritual leader. He is the founder of Wise Preach Ministries, a multicultural, non-denominational, apostolic, global ministry based in the USA, as well as a New York Times bestselling author. I don't know if that's true award-winning filmmaker and host of the Wise Preach platform, recognized as America's best preacher <laughs> by many. <laughs> you don't know who they are, but I'm sure they're all probably his family. Uh, it says he's reached millions of people around. I have no doubt, probably, you know, through the internet. Here it shows that his videos have received over 4 million views. Uh, but you probably didn't know that he was recognized as America's best preacher. So I'm sure he didn't write that. I'm sure somebody else wrote that. So I'm going to leave you with 1 Peter 5. We're going to look at verse 8. You know, when people read this verse, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I want you to pay attention to the very beginning of this. When you look at the church today, or at least much of it, do you think the church is sober? Now, we all always hear this part here, you know, the adversary of the devil is a roaring lion. But they forget to really focus on the front part. How many are sober? Not very many are sober. For when these false prophets leave up the very evidence which condemns them, the false prophecies on video, there's something just not sobering, right? You get what I'm trying to say here? 
when the evidence can be found out, but the people just don't care, there's something so disturbing about this. It's, it's very disheartening. And certainly pray that these followers will awaken. And also pray for all of these false prophets that they would repent and, and come to the truth of Jesus Christ because uh, it's getting really bad out there. So certainly be sober, be vigilant. Uh, why? Well, we have an adversary that wants to absolutely destroy you and nobody's paying attention. The church is asleep in the light. So that's going to conclude our uh, Friday Fruit Clips today. Uh, for those of you that love Jesus Christ in truth and sober-mindedness, God bless you so much. Until next time.